Darker and Darker is a new PvPVE dungeon crawler game by Iron Mace. People describe it as Tarkov, but medieval fantasy. And I'm hooked. Many players have described this as one of the hardest games they've played. So I decided to record my first 100 extraction attempts to answer the question, is 100 matches enough to be good at Darker and Darker for the average gamer? Game 1. I was given what I thought at the time was an unfortunate prophecy. Happen. You're not going to get loot. You're going to die. And then you're going to die exactly what you are now for the next game. Because you suck and you're not good at the game and you're a little, you little no. mama. This actually fueled me because I love proving haters, especially that Oracle, wrong. Once I spawned in, I started doing what I usually like to partake in while playing PvE games property damage. However, a mummy quickly spawned in. These undead monsters are one of the easiest NPCs you will find while playing Dark and Darker. Their attacks are slow and easy to read. My method was to aim for their head with one strike, back off, wait for their whiff, and then go in for a massive head strike afterwards. This, in my opinion, is one of the safest methods for melee players, but it's also quite slow. In later attempts, I found out that you can actually get in two or even three hits in if you hold down your attack button, while either circling around them or timing your back step. This method works best on slow attacking monsters like zombies and mummies, but you can get punished for this if you're not careful with your timing. Nonetheless, I was able to defeat this mummy and collect a cracked sapphire. Mummies during this playtest usually drop gems that you can sell for a decent amount of gold. After searching chests, causing more property damage, and slaying three more mummies, I could officially say that I cleared that room with decent loot and was on my way to proving the prophecy wrong. While trying to get in zone, I came across two skeletons. Here, I panicked because I was low on HP and I took too many steps while trying to kite them. Learn from my mistake and try not to backpedal too far from where monsters spawn because you can quickly trigger other spawn areas and possibly take an arrow to the head. Game 2 is a perfect example of how situations can quickly turn against you. At the beginning, I was sending every monster coming to my way back to their grave. I had no fear. Nothing could stop me. I honestly thought I could escape the second game and easily fight the prophecy given to me. But damn, just like Kratos from God of War, I learned that these prophecies got hands. And more importantly, that these arrows are not to be messed with. Game 3. I found out there's a solos mode called the Goblin Caves. During my first 100 games, the devs changed the difficulty of the monsters several times because almost everyone was dying to these NPCs, which you will see later on in this video. Nonetheless, I got instantly spooked by a trap floor, then I began to battle a wave of spiders. You need to break a jar that looks like this, or else the spiders will keep spawning in. This is one of the few things that I learned before playing this game. Nonetheless, this game ended with me taking too much damage from the zone and eventually dying to a goblin. This cemented the fact that I have no anime plot armor. I let you down, Goblin Slayer! Game 4. Despite not having protagonist plot armor, I still had a thirst for revenge. We started by exterminating two goblins with ease and precision. Then I stumbled upon a dripped out skeleton footman and one of his lackeys. I got a good licking and then realized maybe I do have plot armor because both his swings just ended up missing me at point blank. However, those swings were still quite menacing. So I decided to pull out the Joe Star's family secret technique and run away. But apparently stingers from above are more menacing. Game five, I thought I was playing a Call of Duty zombie mode because of all the mummies that kept spawning in. I ended up facing not one, not two, not three, not four, but six mummies this game. But it wasn't that bad because they dropped great loot. In this game, I also learned that you want to crouch in this area to avoid the wall spikes. And later on, I found out that taking one arrow to the head is just a scratch. But two arrows is more than a simple flesh wound. At this point, I no longer believe in those sayings in game one was a prophecy, but in fact, a curse. And the sole reason why I kept dying, my lack of map knowledge, it was because of the curse. Always panicking when facing multiple monsters, it was the curse. Always taking the arrow to the head, but of course, it can only be the curse. If I wanted to get my first extraction, I needed to find a way to break it. Game 6, it was easy to tell many others were also slowly losing their minds and desperate in trying to get their first extraction too. Let's work together. Let's um, work together. Get the out. Unfortunately, these goblins made sure that we all had a one-way ticket back to the main menu 
Game 7. After some pest control and property damage, I was failing myself. I knew this was the game to break this curse and to claim my first extraction. Nothing can stop me. I was ready to take on any challenge, for I was that nerd Kaizen. First of my name, king of the gray gears, teabagger of the pacifist, slayer of mummies, breaker of wooden barrels, the destroyer. Game 8. It started out nicely. I fought this golem flawlessly without taking any damage. However, I was disappointed that it only dropped what appeared to be a stick. But comparing the damage to my sword, I realized this was no normal stick. It was a big stick with the essence of Teddy Roosevelt himself. I knew this stick was exactly what I needed to break this curse. This will be the game where I not only escape, but I will be giving that good old fashioned American freedom to every monster I see while collecting A1 loot. Two goblins and a real player? No problem for the quarter staff of freedom. After finishing off the goblin, both the rogue and the arrow goblin must have ran away in fear. That was not going to stop me from hunting them down and delivering freedom. However, I heard a glorious sound. I could not pass up the opportunity. So I took the escape portal back to the promised land and I was proud of my loot. I couldn't believe all it took was eight extraction attempts with limited game knowledge to answer the question if a hundred games is enough to be good at dark and darker for the average gamer, right? Wrong. This was a fluke. Don't get me wrong, I was happy and proud of my loot, but I knew I was far from good. In my opinion, to be good in dark and darker, a player must have good map knowledge, not panic or be afraid when facing basic level mobs, be confident in taking PvP fights, and be able to at least extract one in every four dungeon attempts. These were the criteria I set for myself and will determine if 100 games is enough. Because anyone can get lucky, but a good player doesn't need to rely on luck in every extraction, even though it is helpful. In game 9, I learned great things about the quarter staff of freedom. Its reach made handling multiple goblins at the same time a breeze. I did take some damage due to my positioning and being in tight, closed areas with such a long weapon. Nonetheless, I was able to finish them off. The loot they dropped was disappointing though. Because think of it like this. Goblins are a lot harder to slay than mummies, but their loot is quite underwhelming. I would think the harder the monster, the better the loot. Just my opinion though. Later on, I pulled a lever that spawned a dripped out skeleton footman in front of me. I knew mistakes were made. I started to panic and run into a closed off room. Looking back at this footage, I definitely could have played this situation a lot better, especially since I still had a heal ability and protection pots that I could have drank. Nonetheless, the superior footman didn't have patience for me and busted down the door FBI raid style to finish me off. Game 10, I figured I should try a new class, so I picked the Barbarian class. Apparently in the last playtest, it was one of the weaker classes, but it got buffed this playtest. They deal more damage and have more HP, but the trade-off is that their basic attacks are slower and their starter weapon has a smaller reach, which I found out the hard way. Game 11, I realized I failed as a gamer because I never tested if there was fall damage here. So here we go! Looks like gravity won't cripple me, but my poor timing while in close quarters sure will. One of the great things about Dark and Darker is finding lots of loot, which I did in game 12. I love having that dopamine rush because it adds more stakes to wanting to extract. It's truly a great feeling. Unfortunately, goblins don't care about feelings, only facts. I like the fact that they keep sending me to the main menu. Same with game 13 and 14, of course. I was finally getting better with the Barbarian class in game 15, where I was able to get a 2v1 win against some NPCs. Next thing I knew, I found myself a ranger. I gave him the customary teabag, I come in peace. Seemed everything was fine. Next thing I know, I got bamboozled. I saw two people teaming together. But in these type of game modes, is it really teaming? And is it really a bad thing to try to help each other extract? in this solo's game mode. You let me know. Nonetheless, they both died to the ranger who betrayed me. Ed 2 ranger? Game 16, I ran into a skeleton footman who seemed to have hit the Kaio Ken and was the main reason why I died. And I'll be sticking to that story. Game 17 started out pretty decently. I was able to actually kill some mobs this time. However, a goblin snuck up on me while I was trying to run away from the store. 
And this cemented as the last game I'll be playing with Barbarian during this 100 game run. Don't get me wrong, the Barbarian class is very strong. And honestly, I think every class in Dark and Darker has its plus sides and downsides. And you can win with each one. But I just decided to stop torturing myself with the Barbarian class. It's not a good fit for me and my playstyle and thinking. This was my first Claire game, and I'm not gonna lie, it could have been better. It took me a while to figure out how to heal myself and to work other spells. Apparently you have to take out your staff or some other magic item. Nonetheless, it did not help me against this archer. Game 19, I was getting the hang of the cleric class. I was able to dispatch this goblin with ease. And later on, I was able to find another cleric. I thought this was the time to begin the PVP massacre. However, he started teabagging, showing that he wanted nothing but peace. I calmed down my bloodlust to help him fight off these spiders. Unfortunately, he never destroyed the vase and they just overtook me. Next game, I was able to find my favorite place, mainly because these mummies are easy to kill and give out very shiny looking loot. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any players due to the fact they were all dying to NPCs. Nonetheless, I was able to fight my way through these mobs to be the last one standing and was able to get an easy extraction. At this point, I was so confident with Cleric that I decided to stream. And next thing I knew, some buddies wanted to tackle the castle together. I can definitely say this game is a completely different experience with friends when trying to coordinate attacks, especially since friendly fire is a thing. In spite of that, clearing mobs together is so much easier and enjoyable with callouts. Unfortunately, our small chameleon went down. Being down, a player didn't feel as bad as other games, and we still had a chance to revive him. However, I made a mistake of closing a door, which made it impossible for us to escape a 2v3 situation. See how he's rushing you? That's the barbarian bullshit. That's a cleric, actually. Oh my god. No, you oh closed his door? Yeah, yeah I did. It's, 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 it's really his first game. He's level one, bro. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought, I thought we were playing Fortnite. I'm sorry. Spell. Game 22, we faced the Wraith for the first time, and it took our lunch money. However, in the next game, our coordination was a lot better. But while clearing a room with a couple of zombies, we got pinched by another team. That sent us straight back to the main menu. Game 24 is the perfect definition of taking one for the team. Our coordination was in sync, and I know I'm setting the bar low, but we didn't damage each other once while killing monsters or facing other players. However, when there's only one portal between the three of you, things get interesting. I really wish in the future that multiple people can take a single portal to escape together because leaving someone behind just doesn't feel right. And once again, a portal appeared, so we had to make a decision to escape. Luckily, my teammate offered for me to escape, or so I thought. Take the portal, take the portal, take the portal, I'm fine. Aye, aye, aye. <clears throat> Grab all the stuff off the ground. I'm yeah, opening yeah. it. People are coming. Where's the portal? Oh, okay, you got it. I'm out of here. I'm sorry. Go, 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 go. Bruh. The baby, leave. Run away. Run away. Ah! <laughs> Holy shit. What is this? That guy's hurt. Keep, keep fighting the mage. He hurt himself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what the hell? What so happened? I thought we were on the same team. No. What do you mean on the same team? <laughs> You're like, yeah, go take the portal. Next thing I know, you gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can react fast, man. You okay. can like, know what's going on. Oh. Being selfless is an easy thing to do till things get dicey, I guess. Despite this though, I was able to get my first kill on a player. We ended that game with two out of three people escaping. I'll take that as a win in my book. Shoot, everyone knows D's get degrees. In game 25, our pyromaniac wizard decided to call it a night. So that left us going into the castle as a duo. I got taken out early, but my partner was resourceful and patient, which is something you have to do when you're a solo. And because of his resourcefulness, he was able to revive me from the afterlife, just for me to be sent back, thanks to some floor spikes. Despite this though, he was still able to extract on his own. I entered game 26 as a duo with small chameleons. Oh, I never started here before. We cleared this room full of zombies pretty well, and I was also getting the hang of the cleric class, where it seems it works best by hanging in the back lines of fights, supporting teammates afar with buffs. Okay, oh, you should heal me? Oh my yes, god, you helped me up so much, thank you. No problem. Or magical attacks. Damn! Unfortunately, a rogue blindsided my teammate, and here I learned the DPS potential of rogues is not to be messed with, especially as a cleric. Kill him, attack him. Yep, another one is dead. And, and, and one more. 
one more. Oh, huh? oh, he got you. Game 27, we discovered that clearing this room full of skullbacks is easy as a cleric that has holy light. Just kite the bats out one at a time. Oh yeah, that works. Later, I found the Wraith mini boss that took our lunch money in game 22. I once again had to pull out the Joestar family secret technique to run away. However, it would not stop following me. Nonetheless, I locked in the room so it could be someone else's problem. Smoke and me and I were able to regroup later and actually find a portal. However, a stinky crouching rogue stole it from us. Then we ended up in the part of the map I like to call the Gulag slash Fight Club. Because every time I end up in here, I just know it in my soul that fists and fireballs are bound to fly. Just hide if you can. Yeah, I yeah. am. Heal yourself. I can. I'm dead. Whew. This is terrifying. Yeah, you do you. I believe. Ooh. Game 28 started out rough and it looked like we were about to die early. Both of us were separated due to the zombies' poison clouds and players running after Chameleon. So we eventually really regrouped to explore the rest of this map. During this time, I realized how huge the castle is compared to the Goblin Cave. After four runs of the Goblin Cave, I felt like I knew it pretty well. But after five runs of the castle, it felt like I just explored the tip of an iceberg. Nonetheless, we made it to end games, but got split up again. I guess every barbarian just loves the smell of a solo cleric. Because next thing I knew, he charged at me with no worries. On the other side of things, Chameleon was channeling his inner Dead by Daylight sweat by kiting and looping the team that was coming after him. Oh, you running. He's moving. He's I'm moving. He's a track star. Miss him. Turning off the lights and going invisible are a rogue's bread and butter. Oh. Yeah, it's a barb. You can see me? Nah. <laughs> 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 they like critical information. Get that in word. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they're hitting everywhere but where you are right now. It's crazy. But despite this, though, he eventually ended up dying to the zone and to some traps. <laughs> some dead by daylight tech here. Oh! <laughs> Say it ain't so. Game 29 started with us clearing a room full of skeletons, but we got ambushed by a rogue duo. We were able to take one down, but I could not overcome the other rogue's DPS output. Game 30, I decided to return to the solo's dungeon since Chameleon had to leave. My plan was to bully some goblins, but they had other plans. Plans that involved overwhelming me with their numbers. I will be back to hunt them down, John Wick style. If this was a 1v1, then I would be in a good shape. But of course, these goblins never won a fair fight. In game 32, I no longer cared about the odds being fair. I was going to fight the goblin mobs head on. I wanted to fight them with reckless abandonment. However, the only thing that was reckless was my footing. And the fact that I almost got bodied by a trap floor. Nonetheless, I learned from Small Chameleon that sometimes you need to be patient. And because of this, I was able to isolate a 1v1 and defeat this goblin with ease. I befriended another cleric and we were able to slay some mobs together. I didn't feel bad about destroying some NPCs with another player. But my question is, would it be okay if two players gained up on another player in a solos mode of Dark and Darker? I'm personally against something like that, but you let me know how you feel about the idea of two players going against another player in a solos mode. Unfortunately, I did die to a fly that hit the Kaioken. And because of this, I decided to cheer on the cleric that I befriended from the afterlife. But he too was claimed by the darkness. And you wouldn't believe it, in game 33, I befriended another player. It's actually quite surprising how quickly people are willing to fight together in solos versus trios. I would think in solos there would be more bloodbaths because of PvP, but I guess this game really forces that sense of fear to a point where you rather fight together against NPCs for a chance to extract. Nonetheless, the ranger and I eventually split up, and the second that happened, I got ambushed by a knight hiding behind the door. Looking back at this footage, I should have sensed something was off from the fact that the lights were turned off. In game 34, I guess Karma didn't like the fact that I kept teaming up with people in a solo's dungeon. In game 35, I was able to take down some goblins, but still struggle in these 2v1 situations, especially in small closed off areas. Here, I was trying to explain to my chat that I'm not completely trash at the game by showing them the loot that I got on my third game of playing as Cleric. I don't think they really bought it though. 
Game 36 was the most goofy dungeon run I had. It started with me having one of the worst spawn locations, in my opinion. Mainly because every turn I made had mobs I was not comfortable taking on. It got even more silly when I accidentally healed a dead, undead monster. Yes, I healed a dead, undead monster. At this point, I started to think I'm not an average gamer. I must be the world's worst gamer known to man. And the fact that I died to a red boosted fly kind of cements that statement. Game 37 started with an overly aggressive fly that I think was hired by the FBI because it just busted down the door like it had a warrant out for me. During the end game, there were only two other players left. And I guess we were cursed with the worst RNG known to man. We could not find a single escape portal. And I guess due to this realization, we were not going to make it out alive. The barbarians succumbed to madness and killed both of us before being claimed by the darkness themselves. Game 38, I switched to the ranger class with hopes that my couple of years in shooters will help me dominate. One thing I noticed right from the gate was the fact that it's easier to kite monsters as a ranger, but it takes a long time just to finish one creature. Nonetheless, I delivered a fatal blow to all of them that came my way. Luckily, this endgame RNG Jesus was on my side and I was able to find two escape portals. It was cute that this barbarian really thought I was going to fight them. I feel like this run kind of proves that streaming dark and darker was the only reason why I failed to escape previously and not because of my lack of map knowledge, skill, or common sense. Stop the cap! Game 39, I dispatched of this goblin with some trouble because I wanted to be fancy and use a hunter's trap. And after 8 arrows, it failed with the help of the trap that I set. But at what cost? I sized up this fellow ranger to see if they were about that action. They were not. But damn, these spiders are. Breaking things in general as a ranger can be a pain in the butt, especially when you have to break a spider mummy jar. At this point, I think it's better to just use your fists. In game 40, it took me over a minute to finish these mummies with just arrows and kiting. In previous dungeon runs, I was afraid of facing this guy because he looked quite menacing, but it's actually easier to take down than the other goblins. You just have to time their projectile attacks. During the end game of this run, I learned to never bring an arrow to a melee fight. The axes always win. In high sight, I should have tried to create distance to change that melee fight to a range one. But hey, we live and learn. On to the next one. Game 41. After eliminating some NPCs, I ran into a barbarian I had no plans on fighting. Looking back, I could have definitely thrown some arrows at them when I was creating distance. And then I was able to find a fighter who hit me with the I come in peace tea bag. After fighting a goblin, the next thing I knew I got backstabbed. I will never forget this moment for it instilled my major trust issues. No! Why? Why? Game 42. I was able to dispatch a number of mobs and monsters. However, I ran into a problem. Kiting as a ranger only works as long as you have enough space to do so. Which of course corners do not have. The footage for game 43 seemed to have disappeared. The darkness must have claimed it. In game 44, it seems I still have that bad habit of bringing arrows to a melee fight. Damn you, swords! Game 45, I was able to actually slay some monsters, but I couldn't find any real players. I blame the goblins for beating me to it. Nonetheless, I did hear a player above me, but since this portal was already open, I decided to take it. I love the idea of PvP, but I didn't want someone to steal another portal from me just for the darkness to claim me again. Don't worry, I plan on selling these items after I play my 50th game. The darkness has claimed game 46 footage. It is growing stronger. Beware. Game 47. I decided to change class to the wizard, and I had to name it what could have been the greatest esports name in all of Valorant. But nonetheless, I had a special draw to this class. I don't know if it was because I love fantasy games or the fact that Spellbreak wasn't my favorite game. But of course, like most wizards in Dark and Darker, I have a strange addiction to fireballing myself. Despite that, I was still able to charcoal a number of mummies. This spawn location is without a doubt one of my favorites because of them. Easy to kill monsters that draw pretty good items that can be sold for gold. During this endgame, I had a hard time finding players because they kept dying to NPCs. However, I did find an escape portal that I could extract through. Nonetheless, I kept waiting to see if I can find anyone to fight with, which almost cost me an opportunity to extract. 
And seeing how low my HP was, I decided to run as quickly as possible out of here before I died to the zone. Game 48, I wanted to recreate the magic that happened in the previous run. And it started out pretty well. I was destroying goblins left and right with little to no fear. The wizard class truly makes me feel like a magical being with little to no fear. It has great kiting potential and damage output. And you can't forget to meditate. Nonetheless, despite my great start to game 48, thinking that I would actually be able to extract, I got blitzed by a fighter. I guess that's just poor timing. Game 49 started out with this 1v1 against this goblin, or so I thought. Little did I know the second goblin popped out of nowhere. And then I realized it was an ambush, a trap. I've been bamboozled. But nonetheless, I was not afraid. I thought I could still take them on 2v1. Unfortunately, I was still trying to get the hang of some of the wizard's abilities. And because of that, my kiting was off and the goblins were able to get me in the corner and send me back to the main menu. Game 50, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was caught slipping. I was overconfident in my abilities as a wizard because of its damage output and kite ability. Especially when I was going against spiders and zombies which are one of the few monsters in Dark and Darker that put no fear in me. And once I thought I cleared this area, that overconfidence bit me in the butt while meditating. Despite hearing the spiders crawling towards me, I was not fast enough to cancel the meditation. Game 51, I found myself in the goblin den, but I was not afraid. I knew I could take them down. Unfortunately, goblin archers don't miss. Man, I really wish my arrows hit that hard. And I have to say, these next 50 games were pretty rough. But I was able to get better around game 85, thanks to bending the rules a little bit. Game 52, I was confronted by skull bats. And to be honest, I never fear them, and I don't think anyone should fear them. So, of course, I had the bright idea of challenging them to a headbutt competition. Well, I guess they had a harder forehead than Goku. Game 53, I decided to venture off into the castle once again. So I needed to call in some backup. The very first thing we did was commit the Scooby-Doo curse of splitting up. Right, right behind one. I'm not with you anymore. Luckily though, Chameleon was able to take down one person. Got him. Nice. Wow, look, his name was Big Lip Blackie. I've been fighting a lot of racist people today. Surprise, surprise. But he did die to a skeleton footman later on. Nonetheless, I was able to find two nice escape portals. All I had to do was wait for this poison cloud and finish off the zombie, which should be easy. Damn you, rangers. I swear my arrows never hit that hard. The very next game, I decided it was my turn to die first. This left Chameleon with his only option to turn his sneak level all the way up to 100, which worked. Till it didn't. Oh, damn. Got a blast. Oh, GG's. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the darkness wasn't satisfied with our souls. It also wanted footage of game 55, 57, and 58. I do have footage for game 56, but we don't talk about what happened there. Yeah, right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just gave up? <laughs> yeah, fuck this level. <laughs> However, in the very next game, I was able to get some decent loot thanks to defeating this mage goblin, as well as the chest that was spawned next to it. I also sent the zombie back to the grave thanks to holy light. And before this game, I always thought death beetles attacks were melee, but it turns out they shoot out short range projectiles. Projectiles that also send me back to the main menu. I forgot to mention why I went back to the cleric class. Honestly, it's my favorite. I see it as a army swift knife class because it's a mix of a mage and a fighter. However, I like playing it over the fighter class at times because of the extra healing that they provide not only for my team, but for myself. It's like an undo button for my minor mistakes or times I get greedy in my engagements, which is why I feel more confident fighting monsters and people. Like this guy who just popped out of nowhere. They instantly closed the door, which I took it as a sign of weakness. So I opened the door to engage in combat. However, those arrow shots told me to slow down and be patient, which paid off in the form of a portal spawning. 
but of course I got it stolen from me. I honestly thought I touched it first. Nonetheless, I think my choice of not chasing them paid off since they set up this hunter's trap, which would have killed me. Despite all of this, I decided to grab some loot and then was able to escape thanks to another portal spawning nearby, which kind of proves patience can be key. This was my first game as a rogue and I felt like Rock Lee when he removed his training weights against Gara. I was just zooming. I felt like I could just dance circles around these goblins and any monster that came my way. But right, I gotta, forgot I had two feet, start. which might explain how I trapped for. myself here. Right, first. In the next game, I mentally prepared myself for a fight once I saw Thank a trail you. of dead spiders and a cleric. However, no one can prepare you for a barbarian just busting down a door FBI style. Oh my goodness. Lord have mercy. We out. No, 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 no. Oh my goodness. Tell yourself, bro. It's like Mike Tyson okay, said. No worries. I'm sure Everyone has a kills. plan until gotcha, they get gotcha. punched in the mouth. And my oh, plan was to kite the barbarian, which worked. However, <clears throat> I was not used to how short the yeah, rogue uh, reaches with daggers. <laughs> We're both bad. Indeed. Plus, add in the fact that another player okay, showed so there's a, there's up, my demise right was inevitable. Game 63 was the age old tale of, of the fact that one goblin is always easy to fight. The only problem is, is that they never fight fair. Game 64, I decided to change up my loadout to maximize stealth. But going invisible around this corner wasn't going to fool anyone. I guess no amount of stealth can hide my low IQ in decision making. I was getting the hang of the style of play and speed that comes with being a rogue, which revolves around quick attacks while moving side to side. Gotta make use of one of, if not the fastest class in the game. Unfortunately, my trio. stealth you know still needs some work. But hey, if you fail once, you just have to try again. And thanks to hearing some footsteps, I was able to surprise this fighter <sighs> and take him down, honestly. But apparently wall spikes are just as sneaky as I am. Oh my goodness. Game 67, I decided to try my hand at throwing knives. Oh, there's still a lot of which heads I miss still. a few, but one connected with this goblin's forehead to make the world's ugliest unicorn. Gotcha. And and now let me know when you're ready. The earth and, uh, my come. Hideous creation. Be gone, you foul beast. Dang, they jump in him. Didn't really appreciate let him fight are. back. Yeah, they are. Game 68, I was able to take down some monsters, but being greedy and checking for loot was my downfall. <laughs> Game 69, I decided to switch back to clear it. Because this game was very special. For reasons, of course. Here, I was able to find a rogue that knew what they were actually doing by combining a smoke screen and invisibility. And with those combinations, I decided to run away. But this time, the hunted becomes the hunter. And I decided to channel my inner rogue and surprise my pursuer. At this point, I had to commit to the fight and just hold W key, which ended in a double oh, oh, homicide no. trade. Game 70, I discovered that circling around this chest monster gave me an easy way to continually attack it without having to worry about my HP dropping. Too bad I wasn't able to loot it after killing it. Are you dead? I can't loot him? Which was unlucky, but not as unlucky as accidentally falling into a room full of monsters. Oh, <gasps> oh no, no. What? Game 71, I decided to sell some of my items I got from previous runs with hopes that I can survive better with them. And I can say with the improvements of weapons and gears definitely helped me against NPCs like goblins who died in just three hits. But going against another player that was armored from head to toe didn't turn out so well for me, especially since they were a barbarian. However, this time I decided to just go with potions which I didn't need on these monsters. And don't you just love to see goblin on goblin oh my action? God. In my opinion, it's a lot better than goblin on human action. And for game 73, I thought going back to wizard would help. The only problem is, is that I struggle with the magical aspects of the class, which is not a winning recipe at all. Game 74, I decided to go back to my first love, the cleric class. Class I was most comfortable with because of its healing. But it was at this point that I started to think that maybe I'm crutching on this class too much because it covers up some of my mistakes and makes attacking goblins so much easier knowing that I can always heal myself. However though, I'm still no, no, no it's like a real full-grown man. And I bet you it was the same rogue that stole game 75 footage. 
After realizing that I might be crutching on the cleric class's healing abilities, I decided to go back to the fighter. And to be honest, I felt even more comfortable with it. I feared less monsters and was able to kill them easily by either charging at them or just dancing around them. And next thing I know, a rogue tried to oh ambush me. But this time, I didn't back down. I channeled my inner Obi-Wan and with the high ground on my side, I decapitated them. I was on a high, and hearing an escape portal just put the cherry on top Getting, but now for this run, till a damn wall spike ruined everything. Oh! <laughs> Why? I accidentally this dropped game 77 die. footage in the cave troll's den, and after what happened the last time I faced it, he can keep it. I was able to kill this guy, but forgot to record it from the beginning. Nonetheless, I still was able to stand over the corpse of someone I slayed. And with every monster I face, the more confidence I had with the fighter class. I'm sorry, Cleric, but my eyes have a stronger gaze on a different class now. Ah, another fighter. I definitely won't back down. But it seems I will be taking a blade to the forehead. I'm not even upset. I clearly lost to someone with better gamer underwear. In my next run, I was feeling good living in the fast lane. But those wall spikes really love to slow me down. Game 80, I was able to slay some monsters, and I must say playing as the fighter after maining the cleric for so long is like Goku when he removed his weighted gear. Taking fights felt so much faster and precise. However, this barbarian is so lucky that I only had 30 HP in this engagement. The next few games were rough and at times unlucky. I would die pretty quickly to NPCs, and even when I would kill a player, a stronger opponent would show themselves. At this point, I was regretting not doing research for this game. However, all of that changed in game 85, where a viewer came into my chat and gave me some tips. If you played Spellbreak or were a part of the community, you may know him as Gecko, but be sure to give him a follow nonetheless. He basically opened my eyes to the idea of stacking my abilities, which is something I never did before, but I'm sure guide videos have mentioned. And because of this realization, I instantly played better as a cleric taking out monsters and players so much quicker. Unfortunately, RNG was not on my side during this endgame, and I was claimed by the swarm due to not being able to find a portal. And it takes time to unlearn all these bad habits I accumulated over this playthrough. Killing monsters was a lot easier, but other players is where the real challenge was. Sometimes you just can't predict what they're gonna do next. Like this guy who just ran through fire to get a headshot off of me. And honestly, I give them nothing but admiration for this kill. What an absolute madman. After slaying some goblins in game 89, I got reunited with an old friend. The great quarter staff of freedom, the Robin to my Batman. And after a close call against some goblins, it led me to the promised land. Yes! Unfortunately, in game 90, I lost the quarter staff of freedom due to accidentally leaving the queue lobby. Oh no! No! Can I cancel? Exit to lobby. Wait, no. No, I'm stupid! Therefore, I lost my plot armor and quickly fell to these goons. The very next game, I found myself in front of an insane mob of monsters. I was able to down half of them, and the plan was to go back into this room and heal. But those damn projectiles got in the way. As you can see, I got really animated. I live. No shot, bro. No shot. No shot. Through the door? You can't be serious. Oh my goodness. And decided it I'm was it for you. probably a good time to, to do it. the final games off stream. During Dungeon Run 92, I was able to make it to endgame by mostly slaying monsters like goblins and mummies. I would have liked to face players, but they were too busy being nutrients for the NPCs. Nonetheless, I was able to find a portal and escape easily. After conquering the goblin cave again, I decided it was time to take down the castle once more. So Isaiah and I queued together to conquer these ruins. Our coronation and callouts were on point when facing other monsters, which is needed when playing with a pyromaniac wizard. No friendly fire splash damage for me today. And thanks to our teamwork, we were able to fend off a wave of skeletons. Isaiah decided to hit the portal, leaving me to run for my life. Unfortunately, cardio was never my strong suit. Game 94, we got blindsided by a rogue while clearing a room. I think I could have taken them if it wasn't for the fact that these monsters were on me. Oh well, I was able to take solace in the fact that they ended up going straight to the main menu without loot too. In game 95, my partner fell to some skull bats. 
so it was only right that I took my revenge on them. The game plan was to resurrect my teammate, but some players blocked my path. Unfortunately, looking away canceled the opening animation and sealed my fate. I don't know how this keeps happening, but these roads keep pickpocketing my footage. Despite playing 96 games beforehand, I still get these jump scares. Oh my goodness! After finishing off this mimic, we spent the rest of the game running away from the death swarm. My duo was claimed by it first, and just when I thought I was safe, I got hit by another arrow. And I'm not even mad. It was a pretty good shot. I guess the death swarm wasn't done with us in the previous game. For game 99, all I have to say is be careful when opening up secret passageways. You might get trapped like me. I guess they just wanted to stay secret for a reason. Also, feed me whatever buff this fighter had. Their last swing sent me across this room. For game 100, I started things off with a quick scuffle against this row. Unfortunately, it ended up with me tasting dirt. And with that, I must say Dark and Darker is one of the hardest games I've ever played. And I definitely recommend watching guides, experienced streamers, and tips slash tricks videos. For my next Dark and Darker playthrough, I will learn the ins and outs of the Bard class so we can get more PvP wins and extractions. Hopefully we don't have to wait too long for the next playtest or even possible early access. Till then, stay safe and I'll see you guys later.